Okay, the cuttlefish is being cut in half and the waste excess removed so you have two decent halves with a hard outer shell to the outside and the soft textured material to the inside and then we're going to rub these two halves together to smooth them down and to make a flat face to face mating surface so we've rubbed the two halves together we've got a very very nice smooth flat surface on each half so when they mate together There are no gaps, and that gives us a substantial amount of uh, material to carve into. You can do very, very three-dimensional things using a piece of cuttlefish this thick. Before the carving, put pins into the cuttlefish, just pieces of cut welding rod. And this just helps with location and registration. If you want to do uh, quite a three-dimensional carving, it helps with uh, locating both carved halves together. So if you impress them together first, before you start carving, you can then take a rubbing and a, using graphite from a pencil you can uh, create like carbon paper so you can transfer the design from one half to the other. It's just a case of lining the pins up on the cuttlefish and giving them a gentle squeeze together. That way it locks the two halves tightly in place. And when it comes to pouring the mould you know that your two halves are registered together and your internal pattern should hopefully be registered together as well. Right, the two halves have been cleaned up using a soft brush and by doing a gentle agitation of the surface you can remove the dust that naturally occurs with the cuddle and you can bring out the contour of the texture which is part of the beauty of cuttlefish casting it has this fine contour layers built up in it if you don't want to exaggerate the uh, contour quality on the surface of the casting then you don't brush the dust out and it's less uh, contrast on the surface but you can see quite a subtle but heavy texture so this has just been carved quite coarsely and crudely to take advantage of the texture and I've put vents in to take the trapped air away when you're pouring in the hot metal and again I've brushed away the dust in each area to get texture the two halves have been brushed to bring out the texture and a substantial pore hole carved into the top on both halves it's important that the hole is reasonably substantial because you don't want the metal to choke when it's poured in. If it chokes and blocks up, it will freeze and the metal won't pour all the way down to the bottom. So it's, it's important to have a reasonably decent hole for the metal to enter and run through. So there you go, pour hole. All I need to do now is notch the edges 
and then bind it together with some wire so it holds together when the metal is being poured in. Not just cutting the edges and tightly bound together with binding wire. And that will hold the two halves together as well as the pins inside. So there's no danger of it popping open when we uh, pour in the metal. In this case it's going to be cast in pewter. Moulds are now set up in a bucket of sand. And you can see in this one we've got a substantial pour hole. And a reasonable hole in this one. And we'll be casting from the pewter melting pot. Like so. And the metal's just coming up to casting temperature. And we're just about ready to pour. So the metal's up to casting temperature. The ladle's hot. I take a good scoop of metal and very, very carefully pour it into the hole. Right, that's one. And that's two. Now we'll leave that to cool down because you can still see the metal's quite molten, quite mercurial. So we'll leave that to cool off for about five minutes and then you can see there's a meniscus or a bit of a skin starting to set off on the metal. It's slowly, slowly cooling down. But we'll leave it for five minutes till it totally solidifies and we'll take it out and cut them open. Moment of truth. the binding wire off. Still very hot. A bit of wiggle, mm. a wee bit of flashing around the edge which will trim off no problem. You can see the vents where the air's been pushed out so that's done its job. The mold could be reused again because it's in good order. If I get a bit of a tap There you go. There's a reasonable amount of flashing around the edge of the tendrils, but it can still be cut away. It's quite thin actually. It's picked up quite a quite a nice texture. And the plug can be cut off as well. The fact this is pewter is quite soft to work. But you can see the vents here which have done their job, which have taken the air away. Not bad. Okay. See how this is. If this has worked. Okay. I did this one so that it has a flat back. So again, you can see the vents with the airs and pushed out. Really heavy texture because I brushed out the um, surface to get rid of the dust.
And there you go. Bolt's still intact so it can be used again. Nice and clean. And quite a good example of a couple of fish cast texture. Success. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>